Well, hello, here's um, Angela, and I'm going to be doing another in my series of mindful moments. This is my third one. And just exploring really how mindfulness um, can help us um, cope with some of the anxieties and some of the ways in which um, we get stressed about the, the situation that we're living in day by day. So hopefully you might find these helpful. I'm trying to split them down into shorter bursts, so perhaps about five or six minutes at a go, so it's easier just to pick up and, and um, enter into rather than listening for quite some time. So we've got another beautiful sunny day. I'm just looking out at an enormous um, tree. Sorry to say I can't work out which one it is. I'll find out for next time. And uh, a couple of days ago, it didn't have any leaves at all. And then all of a sudden, over the weekend, over the Easter weekend, beautiful pale green, light green leaves. And it's just a joy to behold. So another bright sunny day, but perhaps not so, so bright and sunny for our thoughts, really. So that's why I'm going to have a little time today to look at replenishing and how we can um, help ourselves feel more comfortable about the situation that we're in. So, um, we've got a new normal now, haven't we, really? Um, early on, um, there was a lot of talk about um, we're at, we don't have any routines anymore, we, um, we're out of our normal pattern of interacting with people and our, the effects of social isolation, how that can be really quite, um, have quite a negative effect on our well-being. And so a lot of the good advice is all about setting your new kind of routines um, and your new um, kind of way of, of setting out the day so that it becomes um, a stable kind of environment um, because <clears throat> that really helps helps our well-being to know that at such and such a time we might be doing this and then we're going to set the afternoon and we're going to do two phone calls and we're going to have our tea at the same time or in the evening we might do this and it helps us settle ourselves for the day. Um, because the rest of the world is out of our control, isn't it, really? So helping our own structures can be quite helpful. And one of the things that we can do with our routines is actually set aside, say, just five to ten minutes a day and practice one of these mindfulness techniques, which can be really quite helpful. And I know from some of the comments that um, some of you found this particularly um, beneficial to cope with some of the things, particularly things around... Um, feeling anxious and out of control, but also um, helping to sleep better and that kind of thing. So there's lots of help out there on the web and I'll be pointing you to different um, resources that you may find helpful, things that I've really enjoyed and uh, got a lot out of. And so one of the things I'd like to start off with this morning is actually, this is um, a poster that, let's hold it out properly, this is a poster that I use at the start of my mindfulness um, teaching that I do at um, uh, Wakefield Adult Education. And hopefully I can see it all. But at the bottom, it's got um, this statement, mindful or mindful. So I hope you can see it up um, there. We've got one side of the screen or one side of the picture there's somebody with lots and lots of thoughts flying around. And the other side, which is what the dog's thinking, just sees what's exactly in front of him. Bright sunny day, nice trees. Now, probably what we would um, notice for ourselves, on this side, we could ramp that up big time, couldn't we? We have our normal anxieties and at the moment we've got so many more. So um, today's session really is looking at ways in which we can try and limit those or limit the effect that these worries might have on us. So mindfulness, just to um, remind you, it's, um, it's really about being more fully aware of your own experience in the present moment in a non-judgmental way. And that last part of the sentence is probably the one that most people find difficulty with. We all, we all do, probably. And I'll be exploring that in the next session. Um, so being more aware, having our aware awareness. A lot of the time we run on automatic. And so being aware of thinking, oh, that's funny, I thought that thought again. And normally with that thought, I do go this way. 
So just being aware, taking that step back and thinking, oh, that's interesting, that thought's just popped into my head again at this particular time of the day. Or, um, and how we experience things, often we overanalyse to death sometimes some of the things that we, um, we're thinking about. And we're often not in the present moment, we're often not like the dog. <laughs> we're often, our head is all the stuff that's happened and worries about the past and also worries about the future. So we often um, find it really difficult to stay in the moment. And so a lot of the techniques and things that we look at with mindfulness is about how we try and anchor ourselves in the present moment. And a lot of it we do it through our breath, through our breathing, and we've, um, we've just explored that already. But there's this particular um, quote that I think is really helpful. So apologies if I've already shared this um, with you already, but I find it particularly helpful, and it's by Anne Morrow Lindbergh, about being in the present moment, be more like the dog, really, in the uh, cartoon. Hurry is an unpleasant thing in itself, but also for very unpleasant for whoever is around it. Some people come into my room, and they rushed in and they rushed out. And even when they were there, they were not there. They were in the moment ahead or a moment behind. And some people came in just for a moment and were all there, completely in that moment. So live from day to day, just from day to day. If you do so, you will worry less and live more richly. If you let yourself be absorbed completely, if you surrender completely to the moments as they pass, you will live more richly in those moments. We all probably know, don't we? We all know who um, is rushing around to come into our presence and whether they're really there, really present with us. Um, my kids are always saying to me, Mum, Mum, listen to me. And I'm like, I'm listening, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm listening, but we're not really listening. We're not fully present. So this is a, an activity about being fully present, being aware of our emotions. So it's from um, a really lovely book called People Need Stillness by Wanda Nash. And it's a guided image um, journey, if you like, and it's called Replenishment. And I hope you might find it helpful. Um, so what you need to do is you need to use your imagination, find somewhere where you've got a couple of minutes and um, without any distractions and just let yourself enter into this. So it's a bit like a daydream. You're in a small boat on a stretch of water. And it's a small boat, a bit like a dinghy. And for some time you've been preoccupied with the oars and you're working hard at trying to get them to do what you want them to do and get get to the place where you want to be. So let's hold that image. You're in the boat, you've got the oars and they're just not working really well. And it's really tough work because the paddles are quite small and so they're really inefficient and you don't feel particularly strong. And you know that you're not really cut out to be a long distance rower. And you look up and you see the sun and you feel its rays and you feel as if you're getting hotter, you're getting hotter, you're getting fed up, you're getting really tired, but above all, you're starting to feel really thirsty. The sun's beating down, the oars aren't working, you're hot and bothered and you're feeling thirsty. You look around in the boat, there's nothing there except a ladle. Well, that's no good because you can't drink salt water. So you're starting to feel a bit desperate now and you're nearly at the end of your tether. So you think, oh, well, I'll give it a go. I'll try it out. You pick up the ladle, you dip it into the water and you taste. And it's clear and fresh. And you're on a freshwater lake. 
and you're not on the sea. And the water that you're drinking is fed by underground springs. So it's clear and it's fresh and you can drink it to your heart's content. Just soak in that moment. It's clear and it's fresh. The taste is just so lovely. So now you're feeling refreshed, replenished and filled with a new energy to complete your journey. So what is the name of the water that replenished you? What is the name of the water? Keep that name close to your heart. Stay with it. The relief, the delight, the refreshment, the gratitude, the surprise. Hold that in the silence for as long as it takes. So you can come back to be replenished or infilled at any time you want to. It will always be there. Keep that name close to you and bring some of it back with you. And when, just for now, when you're ready and in your good time, gently and slowly, draw some of that energy back into your body, into your arms, into your fingers, that feeling of replenishment and refreshment. And when you're ready, open your eyes. So, that's just taken a couple of minutes. And it's um, an activity, you can make them up for yourself, something that will actually help you be in the moment and just use your imagination and use all your senses and colour and texture and light and taste and sound and all that kind of thing to make it more realistic. But that feeling of being able to be replenished, to be able to be filled with a new energy, that's really special. Um, for Christians we often use the image of water, living, the living water, the Holy Spirit, the fount of life. And we use that as a really helpful way for us to engage and encounter God in a really um, refreshing and um, replenishing way. So I hope you find that helpful. For the next session we're going to look at um, how we um, practice um, compassion and uh, we look at ourselves with kindness and how we treat ourselves because um, sometimes we, we are very hard on ourselves. So we'll do that um, next time.